Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm here with my coach Nicole and we're gonna answer some of the questions that you guys have asked me on Instagram. So I'll probably do the more like technical and science based yeah. stuff and obviously the stuff that's like personal like hey like how are you in the past and yeah. stuff that's obviously what she's gonna answer. Let's see. Let's start it off. Let's see what we got in here. How long are you at the gym for? Um, between like an hour to two. It kind of depends what I'm doing. When we train it's like what? An hour? An hour. An hour. Do you drink any protein shakes? <laughs> yes, she does, and she needs to. I drink so many protein shakes. I do vegan um, protein, and then I do almond milk, and it's super good. If you guys are ever in the area, come down and see Ziggy at the arm bar. How long did it take you to get to where you are right now? Um, I would say like a couple years um, of just like consistent working out, but still not where I want to be yet, so that's why we got some help. When you started your fitness journey, were you overweight or underweight? I was really underweight. I was tall, I was probably like the same um, height that I am right now, but I was like 90 pounds. So I was really underweight when I started. Yeah. What do you wish someone would have told you at the start? Oh, that's perfect. I wish people told me that it's okay to not know what you're doing in the beginning. It leaves like an intimidation factor. Like people feel like they can't go to the gym because they don't really know what they're doing. And they feel like they're being judged for that all the time. Just walk in there and have like a game plan. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff you can Google for like a quick workout at the gym for, you know, upper body, lower body or whatever. Just stick to something like that for a while, but it's okay to not know what you're doing. It's okay to make the mistakes in the beginning because you'll look back in a year or two and you'll be like, oh wow, like yeah. I'm glad I did that so I could learn this. Make as many as mistakes you can now and then learn from them and get better. That's important. I also wish somebody would told me to eat more. <laughs> yeah. Because I was working out a lot, like every single day, but I wasn't eating enough or eating enough protein, so I wasn't seeing like the results that I really wanted. So I actually want to go off of that. So. Uh -huh. In Marissa's case, she wants to gain weight, but a lot of girls want to like lose weight. And they do that by eating salads or not eating enough or trying to drink water or trying to drink apple cider vinegar and do all these crazy diets that aren't sustainable. To lose weight, you've got to eat. And to eat, you've got to eat properly. It's not just stuffing your face with a bunch of food. It's knowing how much protein you should have, um, what your carb intake should look like, what your fat intake should look like, how much water you're having, your supplementation. Like, are you taking the right vitamins and, and things that are going to help you get to your goal but it's not just eating a salad three times a day because you're just gonna eat a bunch of water and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up binge eating later in the week and you're gonna gain whatever you've lost if you just eat salads you're not getting energy you're not getting protein so you're not building muscle so anything you do lose it's gonna be really easy to gain back how do you stay motivated <laughs> when um, someone's yelling at Nicole you to do something me. No. <laughs> yeah. I think just seeing like small results or like small improvements in my body keeps me motivated and keeps me wanting to come back to the gym even when I don't want to. Um, for sure, that's what keeps me motivated. What about you? Seeing how far I've come. Yeah. When you look back at pictures of yeah. you, when I look back at pictures of me when I was playing soccer and then when I was just starting to lift, there's like such a big difference. The compliments you get from other people as well, while it shouldn't make up your entire like sense of motivation, it's really nice seeing people see your progress as well. That's also very motivational. Yeah, I agree. How to stop feeling intimidated or feel like you're being judged at the gym? That's a good one. That is good. And that's hard to answer. Yeah, that's hard to answer. <laughs> at first, when I first started working out, I was like Ugh. very intimidated because there was girls like Nicole that were very buff, like strong, they looked good, you know, really cute, and I was like, okay, like, ugh. You get a little self-conscious for sure, but I feel like once you get more comfortable in like what you're doing, like in the gym, like you know how to use the machines, like you know what you wanna do when you get there, and then more comfortable in yourself, like then you don't really care, you kinda just tune it out. Also understand that a lot of the girls also in the gym are looking at you saying the same thing. Yeah, that everyone kinda feels the same. So way. everyone, even me to this day, like I'll see a girl, I'm like, wow, she looks really good, like, <laughs> I want to be on her level and then she's probably saying the same thing back anyways yeah. just know that you're all trying to have the same goal and whether it's like losing weight or gaining weight like you all probably want to get thick yeah. and look good <laughs> and you know that's just yeah. like the classic case of what women want to do so just don't feel intimidated because everyone else is thinking the same thing you are you might as well just get in there and do what you're going to do anyways because whether they judge you or not it's you who's really going to put in the work and the effort to get the results that you want not them yeah how do you stay consistent and motivated um, 
I've been working out alone for like a couple years and then like a month ago I was like I need a coach because I feel like I've been looking the same like I feel like I haven't made a lot of progress and I was like I don't know why and so that's when I linked up with this baddie and she's been keeping me consistent because she has like a program for me so like what I do every day in the gym or like my goals she sets goals for me and that's super helpful so since then I've seen a big improvement and it's crazy because it's only been a month so I feel like that's what I was missing so if you guys ever feel like you're stuck or you're not like reaching your goals I recommend getting a coach like Nicole or Nicole don't steal her Just from me, me. Yeah. but I mean you can I guess I have other time slots oh okay she has other time <laughs> slots but don't take my time yeah. slots one, one is gone, one is gone. <laughs> so having, so Marissa's lucky that she has someone who's programming for her. I know a lot of you don't have a coach or can't afford a coach or can't make time to, to get a coach, which is perfectly fine. But to stay consistent, it's nice to have something that's routine. So being able to have a few workouts that you can consistently do um, and then progress through, because you have to make sure you're progressing. Um, so probably for Marissa's case, the reason she plateaued is because she wasn't switching things up. She wasn't either going heavier or yeah. changing her volume or adding in different exercises at the appropriate times. Um, she was just kind of doing the same thing over and over and eventually your body adapts to it. So what we did for her is we kind of switched things up. We gave her things that are a little bit more intense that she absolutely loves. I love it. I love her. Um, but I think that's why she's seeing improvements in her first month already. It's because it's totally different from what she was doing before. And her body is really working hard to get there. And the main thing is that she's eating a lot more. She's not doing salads and things like that. She's yeah. doing protein shakes. She's eating chicken, tuna, a lot of sushi. sushi. Yeah. <laughs> but she's getting her macros in where she needs to. Okay. She said, what are some tips, exercise and eating wise? to get you from skinny to thick hmm protein love her protein know her know her get familiar with her cuddle with her she's do whatever your friend you want. yeah <laughs> I think it's it's not impossible to overdose on protein but especially for females it's gonna be really hard for you to even hit your protein goal let alone overdose so don't be afraid to eat protein but you have to make sure that the things you do eat that contain protein are nutrient dense so you don't want to have like steak every day because it does have a higher content of carbs and fats as well you want to stick to like lean meat so like your your chicken. lean chicken not salmon. like yeah salmon's great salmon's great but not like drenched and drenched in sauces um, you want to keep it not plain, but not with as much seasoning because the seasoning will add to your calorie intake. Make sure that it's nutrient dense. You're not just eating a bunch to eat a bunch, like I kind of said earlier. So I like to stick to like a rule, like at least 20 grams of protein per serving and maybe do like three to five meals a day. Um, so at least 20 grams per serving and you'll probably get to around the numbers you need to get. Of course, it's based on your body weight and you know your body fat and other statistics like that, but it's a pretty good rule to stick to. What was your weight when you started your fitness journey and um, when did you decide to start it? So when I started, I was probably like 105 pounds maybe. I was little. It was probably like two years ago. Now I'm at 133. Two. I think you're 132. Now I'm 132. And she's gaining lean muscle mass. It's not It's not like her body fat is increasing. You have to realize like a pound of fat compared to a pound of muscle is totally different. Like a pound of fat could be like this much in your body compared to that pound of muscle. People think I weigh like 120. Oh, my heart. I'm like 146. Like I'm almost at 150 and I'm aiming for that 150. But Dang. your body holds muscle a lot differently than fat. So don't let the scale affect you. What I would say is um, figure out your body fat, and there's a bunch of different ways you can, but that's gonna really be the key indicator for if you're gaining muscle or if you're gaining fat. How to find a workout plan that works for you? It's gonna be trial and error. You might not see progress even three months into it. I would just say like research, like, you know, bodybuilding.com. Like, I know there's a lot of stuff on the internet that isn't that great, but if you're able to filter through the bad stuff and kind of find things that work for you, I would stick to those and then, um, Gain a little bit more education on, on how to go from there, like how to progress, like when to progress, like why you should progress, when you should change workouts, when you should increase or decrease like your sets and reps. And that's where you kind of have to be a little bit more knowledgeable in what you're doing because like you have to know exactly why you're doing those certain things. Ah. Who me? <laughs> how does she get her waist snatched without losing the booty? Nutrition is one. Wow. Like you can't 
target certain areas, but like if you only work out legs, guess what? Your legs shouldn't get bigger. Just like the guys who only work out upper body, their upper body is disproportionate to their lower body. So like if Marissa just stopped doing upper body, which I would kill her for, you could maintain your lower body and still have a smaller waist because you're eating well in general and gaining more muscle in your lower body. Um, but always make sure that you're proportionate. What do you eat before a workout? Tell me Carbs. Okay, I agree. I eat, I don't try to eat a lot because sometimes she pushes me so hard where I'm like, I'm gonna throw up right now. <laughs> so I try not to overeat, but I'll eat a little bit so I have like some carbs in my system. But what is the proper, I guess, meal to eat before a workout? So you're not wrong. So why do you eat carbs? Like, why do I tell you to eat carbs? Energy. So my motto for this video is carbs are not your enemy, they're your energy. Oh. So, right, you're making oh. sure. <laughs> You're making sure that you have the proper um, percentage or grams of, of carbs before and after working out. Like you're not having like, you know, Cheetos and like pasta and all this stuff before, but you're having like very nutrient dense carbohydrates before you work out. Because carbs are your energy, they're your muscle glycogen. They're what fuel your muscles to continue pushing you through your workout and to continue to grow and provide energy as you're lifting. Because, you know, she works out for an hour, maybe two sometimes, and like maybe the carbs that she had earlier aren't holding her through her workout. Maybe she has to drink Gatorade, or, you know, have like a little like, snack in between yeah you, having a higher intake of carbs versus protein before will help you last through your workout because you have that energy to sustain your 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 workout level and then after because you are your body's kind of in a catabolic state which means it's breaking things down from working out you need something anabolic which means it's going to build which is the amino acids that are found in your protein which help with protein synthesis with help repair your muscles which make them bigger and that's why you have people that have biceps the size of like watermelons. How do you get rid of hip dips? Okay, first of all, Everyone's what behavior. are hip dips? Please demonstrate. This thing. Can, can you see it? You, okay, well she barely so has So I have hip gut. dips. So what happens is no, you cannot get rid of hip dips. Unfortunately, your anatomy is the way it is. Um, the way your femur sits in your hip joint like that's just that's just what it is like you can't get surgery for it nor should you you can work on the fat surrounding the the hip dip but I mean you may see a little bit of difference just because you're either losing or gaining weight but you can never actually get rid of it because that's just your nap so what are the best workouts for your butt and your thighs thighs obviously squats lunges um, like the leg press leg extension machine the one that you just sit down in for your glutes I love the hip thrust I did my thesis on the hip thrust, and so that's my favorite <laughs> thing in the world. Um, wow. And ever since I've been doing the hip thrust more, actually, um, my deadlift got like 15 pounds better. So if you guys want to know more, like let us know, and like we can actually get a little yeah. bit more nerdy with it, and we can actually do a video on, on why I think the hip thrust carries over to your squat and your deadlift. Um, but definitely the hip thrust, the glute ham raise machine that you typically do on like your back extension machine, uh, focus on activating the glutes that way. Um, you know, step ups. And what I really want to focus on step ups yeah. is do not go on the pull up assisted machine and do leg kick downs. Because you're only doing like 40. I see a lot of girls do that. You only do like 40 to 60 pounds on that. In reality, you can do step ups and do your own body weight, which is like 100 pounds to 130. Yeah. So please do not take up the pull up machine and do your, your step downs or your kick downs. Hop on a box, do your step ups there, add some weight on your back, and really get an effective workout. Because you're going to get more out of that rather than hopping yeah. on the pull-up machine when I need to do my assisted pull-ups or Marissa needs to do her <laughs> assisted pull-ups. Follow us on Instagram at, do you know how to do that thing where you can like, you, like put, put it on the, the screen? screen? Yeah. Oh, okay. hell yeah. He's like, duh. He's, He's like, like, you know, he's dumb. Yeah. <laughs> 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 friends are like, idiots. <laughs> okay. Um, follow us on Instagram at Nicole MPT and at ASAP Marissa. Um, like this video if you enjoyed our tips. And definitely comment below um, like different videos that you guys want to see if you guys want us to get into specifics like just all about you know the the glute bridge or yeah. the hip thrust or the squat or the deadlift let us yeah. know um, and we can do videos like specifically on those exercises we can do like do's and don'ts or like you know some tips and tricks and then we definitely want to film on like kind of demonstrating some of the moves and subscribe to the channel to see more videos thanks guys I'm like trying to look like Beyonce over here. And it's not working. Okay, we are.
Beyonce. Both of them.